Center for I Am. We are the Atlanta Center for I Am because we are in Atlanta, but we have a vision of reaching the world with an interesting um, assignment. The Lord has laid on my heart the fact that he wants to eradicate poverty consciousness from the minds of his people in preparation for the great wealth transfer. So what I want to do is start a series of studies I call the Great Wealth Transfer Bible Study. And we're going to teach you biblically that something good is about to happen to you because the wealth of the world is laid up for you. Now today we're going to deal with a concept called quantum physics and wealth transfer, meaning how does science relate to wealth transfer? How does the law of cause and effect relate to wealth transfer? How, why will this happen? One thing you need to understand is that God works by spiritual law and God is a God of spiritual law. Scripture says, whatsoever a man sows, that shall he also reap. That means whatever you plant, you will harvest. Well, who is in charge of the planting? You are. Who is in charge of the harvest? God? No, you are. You need to learn how to reap your harvest. Now, here's what we're dealing with. The wealth of the sinner is laid up for the just, but it's been laid up way too long. I've been thinking lately, Lord, when is a lot of this stuff going to manifest? Now, I know there's timing and there's season, but the Lord started dealing with me about people like billionaire Elon Musk. Is he waiting for his wealth? <laughs> what about Warren Buffett? What about Bill Gates? So I just started thinking about some of the wealthy men that have manifested wealth in the world. So one thing I want you to get in your thinking is wealth is now. But the key is, what we're going to go into today, is you need to learn to make the right affirmations to move the money. Father, in Jesus' name, teach us today your word. All right, Proverbs chapter 13, verse 22. Let's take a look at this from the good old-fashioned King James Bible, Proverbs 13, 22. And we're talking about powerful wealth transfer affirmations. Proverbs 13, 22. Thank you again for joining me. It says, a good man, a good man. Say after me, a good man. How many good people do we have out there? Now we're talking about a good man, a good person. And by the way, it's not just talking about males as the male gender, but you could say a good person. So a good person leaves an inheritance to his children's children, and the wealth of the sinner is laid up for the just. Well, why would you say he's not just talking about a man, since man is the head of the house, he should be the one? Well, what about if you have a wealthy female, like the, well, Queen of England? Do you think she left anything for her people? 
All right, so one thing you need to understand is when the Bible talks about man, the Bible is talking generally about humanity. So a good person leaves an inheritance for his children's children. Now, women, we're not trying to put a monkey on your back. <laughs> but what about you making some money? What about you using your creativity? What about you using your talent? I understand male responsibility and all that. We need more of that in the planet. But a good person leaves blessing for their people. Now, so we're talking about powerful wealth transfer affirmations and quantum physics. Now, the theory of quantum physics is interesting. Quantum physics basically is how energy operates at the molecular level. Now, what are we talking about here? We're talking about managing energy to move wealth. Because when you manage energy, you move wealth. See, all of this is energy management. Quantum physics says, according to quantum physics, we are a part of a vast, invisible energy field which contains uh, limitless possibilities, possible realities, and this field responds to our thoughts and our feelings. Now, here's what I want you to see. The field, the quantum field, responds to you. It responds to your thoughts. It responds to your feelings. Say it responds to me. Cheers. The quantum field is a field of energy. Okay, um, let's think of uh, atoms. One of the smallest measurements of energy man has discovered is the atom. Quantum physics has to do with energy at the atomic level and even the subatomic level or even the molecular, where we get our word molecules from. Now, I know some of you feel like you're in science class, but all we're saying is this. Let's come back to reality, Bernard. Come back to Earth, Earth to Bernard. <laughs> Everything is energy. Say after me, everything is energy. So if everything is energy, wealth must be energy. If everything is energy, money must be energy. If everything is energy, power must be energy. And the interesting thing is scientists have discovered energy can never be destroyed. Energy can never be destroyed. Energy can change. But energy was never created nor destroyed because energy is the substance of God. Say after me, energy is the substance of God. Say that again, energy is the substance of God. Now, I wasn't going to go here, but I feel inspired to look at a scripture since this is a Bible study. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1. Now, faith is the substance of now faith is the what? Substance. Say after me, now faith is the substance. So the substance of God, the energy of God is faith. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. So we see the Bible teaching quantum physics because the Bible is talking about substance. Substance is the energy of God. There's a Greek word, energia. And I know a little Greek. He runs a delicatessen downtown. <laughs> in our Gaia is a Greek word that has to do with the energy of God. See, God is a God of energy. One thing Christians have done is we've given up on the word energy. We've given it over to the world. We've given it to new age. Because if you talk about energy, like, hey, let's get our energy right in this church. People say, we don't want no energy in this church. We want the Holy Ghost. <laughs> What? The Holy Ghost. <laughs> no, <laughs> the Holy Ghost. Now, I'm not, uh, of course, anti-Holy Ghost or anti-Holy Spirit. We believe in the power of the Holy Spirit. But the Holy Spirit is the energy of God. Now, Hebrews 11.3 says, By faith, um, uh, through faith, we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God, so that the things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. So what we're saying is that things that appear on the physical level were not made by things on the physical level. 
the things that appear on the sense knowledge level, five physical senses we have. And we can see, we can hear, we can touch, we can smell, and so forth. But the things we see, touch, smell, and hear were not made by things we see, touch, smell, and hear. They were made in the quantum field. I'll let that sink in. They were made in the quantum realm, which is a realm of invisibility, invisible a spirituality in invisible substance. That's the word. Substance. It's a realm of invisible substance. So what scientists call quantum physics, the Bible calls substance. And one thing I want to do is help break down to you what the Bible has to say about these things. Now, so what does this have to do with your wealth? Well, wealth of the sinner Wealth of the sinner, say wealth of the sinner, is laid up for whom? The just. Okay, so who has the wealth? The sinner. Or some translations say the wicked. Well, wicked, we get our word wicker, or we get the word wicked from the word wicker, which um, we get that word from furniture. When you look at wicker furniture, twisted up furniture, I'll never forget my grandmother had some of it on her porch. Remember the old furniture that was made of twisted up pieces of, looks like little poles or wood or whatever. Well, a wicked person is a twisted person. So the wealth of the twisted, well, why would you call them twisted? Because they're not doing the right thing with money. See, no matter what you get out of this, start doing the right thing with money. That's what the great I am is saying. Start doing the right thing with money. Because if you don't, that money, by spiritual law, by karmic action, by, uh, how do I say it? By quantum reality and quantum energy will go to someone who's doing the right thing. You could just say, I am a money magnet. Say it, I am a money magnet. Now, when you become a magnet, you start attracting things to you. So now we've got the wealth of the twisted, but where is the wealth? It's laid up. Where? Laid up. It's like we know where the wealth is, but it ain't here. <laughs> and that's what some of you are saying. The wealth is everywhere but in my house. Well, my Bible, this book says, wealth and riches shall be in your house. So God wants you to have a house full of wealth and riches. That's what it says. Psalm 112, you can go read it. But the wealth is laid up. The wealth of the twisted is laid up. So we now know who has the wealth and we know where the wealth is. It's laid up in the camp of the wicked. But whom is it laid up for? It's laid up for someone. <laughs> it's laid up for the just. Well, who's the just? Scripture says the just shall live by faith. Okay, so what is faith? The substance. Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for. Are you following me? The evidence of things not seen. This faith has framed the worlds by the, the invisible substance of faith framed the world. And then now scientists have come full circle to discover what's called quantum physics, which has to do with the fact that we are vast, we are, well, we exist in a vast, well, some people call it the quantum uh, field. They call it the, um, the unified field, which I believe it's a scientific term for simply the kingdom of God. It's the realm of ever expanding good. Folks, if we're going to move money, we've got to understand that money is good and that we are supposed to have it. And we have to know how to move it by faith. So according to quantum physics, one thought I want to leave with you today, and we're going to make some affirmations. We are a part of a vast, invisible field of energy. Say, I am a part of a vast, invisible field of energy. And this field contains all possible realities. And it responds to our thoughts and feelings. Now, here's what I want to get to. What does the energy respond to? Your thoughts 
and your feelings. Now, a word is a spoken thought. So when you speak a word, you're saying what you thought. The scripture says, out of the abundance of the heart, <laughs> out of the belly, men speak. So if you're speaking failure, death, life uh, of uh, shortage, life of lack, life of, uh, of weakness, lack of power, lack of ability, can't do it. All right, you need to stop saying I can't and start saying I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me. Come on, say after me, I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me. So whatever you're facing today, get a can do, a can do, a can do mentality. Get rid of the word can't. One guy said the only devil in the world is can't. <laughs> okay, so since everything is made up of energy, how do we move the energy? Thoughts, feelings, words. Now this brings us all the way to affirmations. Are you following me today? Now we're taking our time and doing a little teaching on um, understanding this quantum feel and this quantum realm of energy. Because what I want you to do is not just say the wealth of the sinner is laid up for me, but say the wealth of the sinner comes to me. Say after me, money comes to me now. Come on, say it again. Money comes to me now. Now say, I am a money magnet. Now this brings us to affirmations. Every day, folks, we're being bombarded with negative messages, especially in the media. I was thinking recently after watching one of the debates of the politicians, um, oh God, you talk about a circus. And... They were basically using fear to motivate people to vote for them, basically. So we're talking about economics. Now, one of the fears is the fear of inflation, the fear of lack, the fear of shortage. If you're a Christian, stop talking that way. Stop talking lack, stop talking shortage, stop talking inflation, all right? Stop talking grocery prices. They were saying average family spends $440 more per month than they were spending. Big deal. Just make $440 more than you were making. <laughs> we act like $440 <laughs> is gonna destroy everybody. And we go, oh, the world's coming to an end, inflation. <laughs> Away with Biden and all that. <laughs> now, I'm not a political guy and I don't support political candidates. I, Candidates, I believe that the scripture says, uh, render to God what's God, Caesar what's Caesar, Caesar what's Caesar, God what's God's, as I paraphrase that verse. But what he's saying is honor people. So we do pray for the president and all that are in authority. That is a biblical command. Okay, whoever's in the office, we're to pray for. But the politicians, in order to get votes, are using a fear tactic. So this whole economic thing, you may say, well, yeah, but it's real. Have you been to the gas pump lately? <laughs> okay. Now, manipulation is a master tool of our enemy. The enemy is Satan, S-A-T-A-N. You could say Satan is seeing anything as negative, S-A-T-A-N, an acronym, seeing anything as negative. So when you get negative, you're starting to flow with Satan. You're starting to flow with evil. So who are we to flow with? Yeah, but we're Christian people and we want the right people in office. Yeah, but we don't want to get them in office by fear. We want to get them in office by prayer, by faith. Pray for your governor. Pray for your mayor. Pray for your city. Pray for your country. Pray for your president. Pray for your vice president. Pray for the Senate. Pray for the House. Pray, pray, pray. If my people called by my name will humble themselves and pray, seek my face, turn from their wicked ways, then I'll hear from heaven, forgive their sins, and heal their land. So the Bible teaches prayer. Yeah, this book right here. <laughs> why do you pull out the Bible? Here's why. I noticed a lot of people are lightly esteeming the word of God today. And that's a dangerous position to be in. It's now time to get stronger in faith in the word than you have ever been in your life. Now, of course, I have um, my digital Bible, have my iPad here. 
So I've got my Apple Pencil. So I'm into technology. I'm not just some King James fuddy-dud. But I believe we need to hold to the truth of Scripture and esteem the Word. In fact, one of the biggest problems is people are lightly esteeming the Word of God. If you treat the Word like it's a common book, you will fail financially. you got to treat the Word like it's God talking to you. Reverence what the Word of God has to say. All right, so we take this Word and we put it in our mouths because the Word is near you even in your mouth and in your heart. I have put together a book, I Am Affirmations to Create Wealth, and now I want to lead you in some wealth affirmations. And I am, uh, I feel inspired that we're going to do this for a while, but you know me, we pray and we follow the Holy Spirit. But we may be on this series a while, so meaning... Go to my website, which is centerforim.com, and get you a copy of this book. It's on the first page, Center for I Am, C E N T R E for I Am.com. And the book is I Am Affirmations to Create Well, because we've shown you that everything is energy, money is energy, wealth is energy, wealth is laid up, is laid up for you, but you don't have it yet because you need a transfer, a wealth transfer. Now, how do you get that wealth transfer? Affirmation. Because words move energy. Jesus said in Mark eleven twenty three, 23, For verily I say unto you, that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he saith, which he what saith, shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he saith. Now, Jesus said three times as much about saying as he did about believing in that. Whosoever shall say, one, unto this mountain, be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, shall believe that those things which he saith, two, shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he saith, three. Believe one time, say three times. So we as teachers need to do three times as much teaching about saying as we do about doubt and unbelief. We need to teach people how to speak. So my simple message today is to move the wealth that is laid up for you. Start making affirmations of wealth. Affirmations release creative energy. Affirmations activate the law of attraction. Ac affirmations actually attract. The affirmation is attractive because the affirmation is energy. And like begets like. If you're talking poverty, you're going to have plenty of it. <laughs> talking lack, go right ahead and keep following the politicians if you want. You'll find yourself so bound up that you can't even pay your bills. If you're talking abundance, you're going to have abundance. Because death and life are in the power of the affirmation. The power of the word, the power of the tone. Prosperity, poverty are also in the power of the tone. But we're going to release some prosperity. So I put together in the back of the book, this workshop, you can't see it, but this, this book is really a workshop. I was thinking about this morning, several people have bought it and said it's changed their lives because it's a workshop, but you got to do the work. The book's not going to do the work for you. I bought your book, but nothing's changed in my finances. <laughs> Are you applying what you learned? Well, you know, I'm praying. Well, it's time to pray, but there's a time to get off of your knees and stand up and start decreeing some things and seeing them come to pass. Okay, so we put together what we call VAM, V-A-M, workshop. Now, I said VAM, not that other word that rhymes with AM. <laughs> so we put together some VAM workshops here. Some VAM, V is for visualize, A is for affirm, M is for meditate. So now we're going to lead you in some meditations of prosperity. Shortly, we'll wrap this up. I know I'm going a little longer in this series, but it's time to get people. This is for people. I believe God is going to raise up a thousand millionaires that we will personally have a part in. I'm just putting that out there. And I believe you may be one of them. It's up to you to decide. 
but you've got to go to work and dig into this thing. It's not about me. It's about your wealth. Your wealth is laid up for the just. Your wealth is laid. Your children's inheritance is in the house of the wicked. It's laid up for you. All right. Let's make these affirmations. Them affirmations will make the ones in the first workshop of the book. Number one is this. Say after me. I am open to receiving wealth. I am open to receiving wealth. Now say, I am attracting great wealth into my life. I am attracting great wealth into my life. Now say, I am a magnet for wealth. I am a magnet for wealth. Close your eyes and say this one. Wealth flows to me and through me. Wealth flows to me and through me. Now say, wealth comes to me in different ways. Wealth comes to me in different ways. Now affirm, attracting wealth comes easily and effortlessly to me. Attracting wealth comes easily and effortlessly to me. Sweatless prosperity, you could say. All right, affirm this. I believe that I can easily attract wealth. I believe that I can easily attract wealth. Now, here's why. You need to get this. Uh, some of you are saying it's hard to make money. It's hard to get money. And I'm going to get all I can and can all I get and put a lid on that can because <laughs> it was hard to get it. I work hard for my money. Well, I am submitting to you that you need to believe that you can easily attract wealth. Wealth does come by working, but it also comes by attracting. And what I'm teaching you is the law of attraction, how to attract wealth. And while you're at my website, you might check out the ebook on law of attraction because we need to understand spiritual law. All right, next, say this after me. Being wealthy is my birthright. Being wealthy is my birthright. Now, finally say, I am surrounded by wealth and riches. I am surrounded by wealth and riches. Thank you, Father, for teaching us your word. Help people to apply these simple biblical principles to their lives and to see the wealth that is laid up for them moved, transferred literally into their accounts, into their homes, into their businesses, because the wealth of the sinner is laid up for the just. Well, great wealth transfer Bible study. Thank you so much for joining me. Visit us on the World Wide Web at centerforim.com. And should you feel inspired to or led by God to support us, go ahead and make a rich donation. Our vision, again, is eradicating poverty consciousness from the minds of people. And I am focused, laser focused on this as an assignment from God to help people to come out of financial bondage and into abundance. See, the wealth is laid up for you, and that's a classical scripture, but God is good. That's why he laid up the wealth for you. So this is a goodness message. This is a fun message. This is a happiness message. We're about to come out with silver and gold and not one feeble among our tribes. That's the prosperity and the health promised in third John 2. All right, go to my website, center, C-E-N-T-R-E, for I am, dot com. If you enjoyed this, share it with someone else. People need knowledge of the truth. And my prayer, as always, is may God, the great I am, expand your life until your destiny is fulfilled.